Well, I'm sure there'll be a few of us who will kind of join as we go, but I want to keep this kind of on time and all the rest of it so that people who have set aside the time can uh, pretty much enjoy what we're doing and then can leave whenever they feel like it. Um, just so you know, this is all being recorded. So if you feel like uh, referring back to it at some point or you want to share it or whatever uh, later on, feel free to. Um, and I'll essentially kind of run through uh, the brief outline that was in the email that I sent out. Um, and then uh, I want to spend really as much time as I can answering any questions that you guys have because um, you know, I've, I've got a vague idea of what I'm doing, but I want to make sure that um, I communicate what's, what's coming out of this end appropriately and then uh, you guys can essentially utilise it however you like. So uh, basically if we start off, uh, I want to make sure that the first thing that you know is I'm not seeking to make any money out of this. So, you know, although it's through my website and whatever else, I'm not actually looking to sell any of uh, the videos that I make or any of the booklets I make or anything like that. Uh, it'll all just be up there and free. Uh, and I've already had a few people that have said that they're happy to share their stuff and uh, all the rest of the world. So uh, I've got to make sure everything is done you know, above board. It's free. Um, anything that you choose to contribute will still belong to you. I'm not going to like copyright it or anything like that. Um, <laughs> And then uh, if you choose to participate in any kind of research aspect of what goes on in this, uh, it'll be kept anonymous. So um, I've been accepted to present on flipped learning at the ACHPA International uh, Conference that's in January next year. Uh, and so I'm hoping to essentially collect some kind of data as well on the way, but you don't have to participate in that. It's completely voluntary. Um, you know, I'm, I don't even, te technically to present, I don't need it, but I'm, figure it makes my presentation a bit better if I've got a few more teachers and their experiences uh, in terms of uh, what's happening with flipped learning, uh, whether or not it was engaging or not and stuff like that. But I'll talk a bit more about that towards the end. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I was very clear and upfront that I'm not seeking to make money out of um, uh, what we're doing here. Uh, and I do definitely uh, very much like collaboration and networking. It is, uh, you know, I'm, it's my, I'm a regional rep for uh, the Teachers Association and uh, I just, I love going to the social stuff where you get to hang out with people and uh, make friends and all that. So that's part of what this is about too. So we all going to, if you choose to, you know, get on board with it, I'm sure we'll all kind of get to know each other as we go and um, help each other out. And yeah, I think that's uh, something that's been missing in PDH for a while. It's something that I've noticed has really um, escalated a lot in CAFs, with the CAFs network that's come out. Um, and so, you know, I actually am a bit jealous of that, but I don't teach CAFs. <laughs> so I'll just give you a basic idea of what flipped learning is. So flipped learning uh, is essentially, it's been going on for ages and it has uh, a very large variety of how um, people flip. So you can flip, you know, you, most of you probably um, at university had some kind of flipping where you may have been assigned set readings in a textbook that you had to get through before you came into the lecture. Um, or you may have had, you know, if you're a more recent graduate, you probably had online videos and stuff that presented the content and then you still may have gone in for some uh, tutorials and stuff. And uh, so they're all really various ways of flipping. So uh, your basic concept of flip learning is that you present the content at home and then when the kids come into class, you're actually looking at applying and uh, deepening their knowledge rather than spending your time presenting knowledge. So all the presenting of content essentially becomes something that the kids do at home um, or they, the kids can do in their own kind of um, setting. And then when they're in your classroom uh, for PDH, you're actually just doing you know, a quick um, uh, check that they've actually looked at the content, they've got an idea of what it is, and then you're going to expand on that uh, give them some activities and then you're around with them essentially to help them with those activities which then helps them to deepen their learning. It gives you more time uh, to do question and answer and stuff with the kids. So a lot of kids, you know, they have lots of questions that they have um, and so if they've kind of looked at the content already when they come in, uh, you get more time to do that. That's essentially the basic idea of flipped learning um, and in the basic one, normally the class will kind of progress along together. So you'll say, all right, this week you've got to go home, watch this video, read this uh, section of the textbook or something. And then when they come into class, you can go, all right, what did you learn from that? Who's got questions? Share your questions. Let's go and uh, look at a particular activity. You might have a practice exam question and you'll get a bit more time in class to do those types of things. Um, but it, the class is still progressing together. Um, 
this year I'm moving from the more basic flip learning with my class to doing a more flipped mastery approach. Um, and that essentially means that I'm going to give my kids the content, but the kids have to sh show me that they know the content before they can move on. Uh, and that means that the kids will move along at their own pace. So I'm not expecting the whole class to be at the same point each lesson, um, but I'm going to come into the lesson and the kids are expected to have, uh, be learning stuff um, and they can, in my context, uh, I'm not going to make my kids do a lot at home, so to speak, but they're going to have those videos and stuff where they're going to, um, they can watch it at their own time. So whenever they're up to uh, that point in content, they can watch that video, keep working uh, at their own pace essentially, and I'm still there to come and help them to work through that. Uh, there will be times because there are some things that you can't do individually, like you know, if I want to do a prac session to uh, have a closer look at taping or whatever, um, yeah, I need to have a group of kids uh, to be able to tape each other and that kind of stuff. But essentially the flip mastery approach is about them progressing uh, at their own rate. And the other thing with the flip mastery is that I'm, I'm going to actually check that the kids have learnt it before I allow them to progress on. Uh, so, for example, uh, once we get to factors affecting performance or something, uh, I'm going to make sure that my kids can show me somehow, whether it be by having a chat with me, doing a quiz, whatever it is, uh, that they understand the energy systems before I then let them move on to learn about uh, the different approaches and methods to training and stuff. And so uh, that's that flip mastery. And so you don't have to do mastery. You don't have to do flips. You can choose whatever you like um, with what uh, I produce and what other people probably will produce and share as well. Um, but I just uh, want you to know there are a few different approaches with flipped learning. Uh, and so my approach that I'm going to trial uh, this term is a flipped mastery approach and I hope that my class uh, get on board with it and uh, enjoy it. And I, uh, I'm in a very different setting for my, my, um, my classroom. So it'll actually, I know that that'll work a lot better for my setting. Whereas in your setting, um, you know, I have a, a one classroom, one teacher model. So uh, I always see my kids, uh, I, I teach them a range of subjects as, as well as PD, HPD, and so uh, I want them to do a flip mastery approach with a fair few of their subjects so they can actually progress through various subjects at their own pace um, and I get the chance to just come and uh, give them uh, some feedback, help them check, the, uh, check their understanding and stuff. And then why to do it? So essentially... Uh, flipped learning is the, one of the key things for it uh, is that it gets the students to be in control. So they're not just in control of um, being responsible for their learning, but they also get to stop and rewind uh, me or you or whoever, like whoever happens to make the content that you provide for them. So as they're going through a presentation, as you'll notice, like in class, often you'll have kids who have uh, 100 questions. You'll have other kids who may have the questions and don't ask. You have other kids who are waiting for you to progress on your presentation because they've already taken all the notes from that PowerPoint slide and whatever else. Uh, and so flipped learning allows them to uh, progress through that at their own pace. They can stop you, take their notes, they can rewind and um, go back to the beginning of it. Um, if they've missed something, if I spoke too fast, like yeah, you can tell already that I speak quite quickly sometimes. Um, it's very, uh, it gives them that control so they can go back over the content and go, oh, I didn't quite hear that. Uh, can you say that again? Rather than having to ask you to say it again, they can just go, I'll just rewind it and have another, have another look at that section of the video. Uh, it also allows for better use of class time, like I've mentioned. So it means that you can, in class, you're not a presenter, you become uh, more of a facilitator and, a, and do more of the actual teaching uh, aspect of, of, um, of school. So uh, you get to spend time deepening the understanding with those extension with the kids at the top. Uh, applying learning, uh, helping them with their study. Uh, so, you know, I intend on spending time in my classroom helping the kids uh, structure and write their summaries, develop flashcards, give them time in class to even check their flashcards and stuff and do testing with each other, all kinds of stuff. And just because of you're taking the uh, delivery of content out of your classroom, you're essentially getting back, uh, you know, uh, probably about 50% of your classroom time uh, so that you can then do other things with those uh, students in that time. Uh, I put this in here because um, essentially this is a very small book. It's called Flip Your Classroom. It's by Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sands. Uh, these guys are essentially the gurus of flipped learning. Um, they come out of the USA. But uh, this book that they've got, um, I think I bought it for like 10 bucks or something on Amazon. It's quite cheap uh, and it's not long. So I think it was a total of 50 pages or something. 
um, and it provides you a lot of really good, uh, useful information about how to flip well. Um, and hopefully um, my videos will get better and better as I uh, get more and more used to creating them with um, the technology that I've got. Uh, so they become more engaging uh, and I can start to cater things more to um, what works well. And hopefully as I get feedback from you guys um, and from your students and stuff, I'll ha have a better idea of what works well for your kids and what works well for you. Uh, and you can feel free. Uh, I don't care if you download my videos from YouTube and edit them and whatever else. It's part of the reason why I used uh, YouTube to share all my stuff is so that um, people can essentially do what they like or what they need to with it. So I highly recommend um, that you take, uh, I think it took me two hours to read, uh, not even. So it doesn't take a lot of time, but it was a very worth the read. Really enjoyed it. And I highly recommend if you're going to uh, do this approach, particularly if it's the first time you've ever done it, to have a read of that book. Uh, he'll explain the difference between your normal flip learning and your flip mastery learning a lot better um, and than I just did then. And so he'll also give you a few better ideas of what to do uh, with that extra class time that you're going to get with your students. So in terms of the resources that uh, I'm going to provide for you guys out of you know, prettyhp.net, um, so I'm going to make some videos uh, which are essentially just going to be kind of recorded presentations. Um, I'll hopefully get better and better at these uh, in terms of putting um, you know, words that stick out that are key terms or whatever um, in the videos and things like that. Um, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm quite keen to pump out as many as I can because I told people that you know, sports better be ready by next end of next week, essentially, uh, which I'm nearly, I'm probably halfway through sports med. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm going to present some kind of videos that are essentially just presentations of content um, and those presentations will vary from using Prezi, PowerPoint, um, whether I probably won't do too many that are just my head talking because I think they're a bit more boring um, than the other ones that can be managed. But um, I'll essentially seek to create as much and be as creative as I can with the technology and time that I've got uh, for that. I'm also going to produce some booklets. So... The booklets are going to follow the syllabus. Uh, they're not going to have a lot of content in them, but then what they are going to have is all the um, learning activities for the students to do. Because I particularly am seeking to do uh, flipped mastery learning, uh, I can't have me go around and say, all right, the next activity you need to do is this, the next activity you need to do is that. Um, so I'm going to create a booklet that's essentially going to have, um, once you've done the content, and it'll have, you know, so it might start with, the syllabus stop points and then the section of the textbooks um, that are relevant for that. Um, yeah, there'll be a link uh, probably as well to the section of my website that's relevant for that, uh, a link to the videos that are relevant for that, and then learning activities. So it might be a research activity, it could be some practical application, it could be some um, past HSC exam questions. There'll be a whole bunch, a variety of activities in there uh, for the students to then work through with that content um, and to ask me questions of whenever they get stuck or whenever they need my feedback. Um, hopefully I'll also be able to provide um, like a teacher's resource to go along with that in terms of providing some kind of answers and stuff, uh, depending on the level of your experience really uh, with HSC, PDH as to whether you'll need that or not. Um, I suspect that most of you probably don't need too much in terms of you know, what the actual answers are. Uh, you probably just need um, more helping getting the content, the videos made and stuff, which tends to be the bit that takes up more time. Um, and also I'm hoping to develop some quizzes. Uh, so there'll be multiple choice quizzes um, that might use Quizzes or Kahoot. Um, I've got a, um, you know, Moodle and stuff like that. So I'll essentially kind of create a whole bunch of um, questions that can then be stuck onto any kind of online platform that you want to use with your students um, to then check their knowledge. So, um, I might use a Kahoot quiz, for example, um, with my whole class, if I'm going to do a whole class type flip. Um, but with my, my school, I'm going to have um, self-marked little quizzes that will actually tell the kids and I'm going to tell them, yeah, you've got to get over a certain percentage to show that you actually know the content before I'll let you move on to the next one because I'm looking at that mastery kind of thing. I want them to show me that they actually know it before they then get the next chunk. Um, so... I'm hoping to produce um, quizzes. They're not all necessarily going to be multiple choice, um, particularly for something like sports med, where when it comes to the HSC, there is no multiple choice. So um, they might get a few more you know, extended response type questions to show that um, they've learnt about the content. So, um, yeah, but that's essentially the kind of stuff that I'm hoping to produce. And no doubt there'll be other stuff that you'd like. And um, feel free to you know, make 
comments in the um, chat room or whatever about things, extra things that you might like. Um, I will endeavor to produce as much as I can, but I am teaching my own class um, and also uh, trying to run this and the website and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not going to make promises um, beyond what's there at this point, um, but it doesn't mean to say that I won't give it a go and won't try it uh, if there's something in particular that you like. Um, and feel free to uh, share anything that you want to make. So in terms of whether it will all get, be prepared, so sports med, I'm hoping to have all sports med done uh, before the end of next week. So um, which means I've still got a fair bit of work to do next week, but I'm pretty con confident that I'll be able to get that out. Uh, and there's been a few people that have asked for uh, call one resources. Uh, at this point, I suspect that uh, if I'm going to start to produce call one, it'll probably be produced more as we go throughout the term because uh, I mean, I've got to update um, Call One anyway because the 2016 Australia's Health got released, uh, I think, just before the end of last term. So I've got to now go through and check that all the information on my website and everything is, matches up with that and uh, et cetera. So I've got to update it anyway. So I'll probably uh, produce stuff as I update it. Um, but that'll probably be done throughout the term as the term progresses. Um, and I'll aim to have, you know, the first critical question done and then I'll release that and then I'll try and get the next critical question done and release that um, so that, you know, the booklets are kind of, you know, a decent, half decent size and uh, will take a little bit to get through before the next one then comes out. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a, the health priorities is I hope that I'll be able to uh, do that. But of course, yeah, my typical term for things uh, will come up as well in terms of report writing, whatever else uh, that needs to happen. So uh, please, you know, just remember that I'm still a teacher as well. <laughs> I'll get the same uh, stresses that you guys will have. Uh, and then in terms of help, so um, more will be produced faster if people want to help producing the resources. So uh, we've already had a couple of people up their hand and say, I'd love to give a go producing some content or uh, I've had someone particularly say that they're going to help me edit and produce all the work booklets and stuff. Uh, so, you know, the, the more people who do that, I'm happy to just share it all. Uh, and people can then, it gives you a range of resources to select from uh, and stuff like that. Um, just please be careful in your sharing of things that you're not breaching any kind of copyright stuff. Uh, so don't just have booklets that are copied and pasted chunks of textbook because um, that will then uh, probably get us in a bit of trouble. <clears throat> and then uh, if you are going to produce any kind of videos or anything, so I use Camtasia to present videos. It's actually a really good uh, video making resource. So it will record your screen and use your video camera kind of like this is at the moment where you can see my head and you can see my screen. Uh, and then it will put it straight into a video editing format for you so that you can then go through um, and you can zoom in on particular sections, you can zoom out, you can um, add sound effects, you can put little um, annotations and stuff on the screen. Uh, if you've got um, a touch screen or you've got an iPad or something, you can probably get it in a way where you can uh, record your actual writings on the screen as well um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's set up to work very well, Camtasia, and, and uh, make sure that you go to the education pricing if you do choose to get it because the education pricing is just under 100 bucks. Um, I looked at it yesterday uh, just to remind myself, uh, but um, I think the actual proper version is like 250 or something. So you're getting a fair, fairly good discount as an educator. So in terms of where to get the resources, so my general intention is to stick them up on my website because that's easy for me. And um, so I'll essentially create, you know, like a page for sports med and a page for factors affecting a page for health priorities, etc. as it all gets produced. Um, and then I'll, um, structure it so that it all goes underneath critical questions and is in order of dot points and all that kind of stuff so that it's easy to, easy to navigate. The videos and stuff that are produced will go straight up uh, onto YouTube. I will also embed those YouTube clips into my website anyway, so they'll get embedded. So if you go to um, sports medicine, um, how to classify sports injuries, I will embed the how to classify sports injuries into that web page so that um, the kids can watch the video and then there's also all the content there if they want to read more information about it. Um, but in terms of booklets and all that kind of stuff, I hope to um, stick them up uh, yeah, on pages. I'll probably give some navigation to that down the bottom um, 
I'm not sure if I'll be able to fit it into my top menu. That's the only reason that I'm not thinking of sticking to my top menu because it, you, if you've been to my website, you'll see it's already quite full across the top. Um, and I'm not actually, a, I'm not a very good at uh, organizing and setting up websites. I know you guys just see the end, other end of it, but um, yeah, I've had plenty of issues with particularly my menu and trying to get it to work properly. So I'll probably end up sticking it in the bottom menu where you scroll down to the bottom and it'll just say teachers resources or something. And then I'll give a side nav for the different um, uh, modules and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll be nice and easy to get to still. Um, and I'll also, as I produce stuff, I'll send out emails with links in it so that you can easily just click a link and uh, it'll give you those resources. If you choose to share stuff, um, that's uh, where I would end up sharing it uh, essentially. Uh, there is another option um, of organising it into something like Google Docs um, or Dropbox or something like that, um, but that has issues in terms of um, the size of documents because um, eventually you'll have to up, like my Dropbox is already telling me that I have to upgrade in order to put anything else in it. Um, so I, and I don't know how that would work uh, with that kind of size. And the other option is to do an edu wiki type thing, which is essentially what... Um, what the CAFS network have used is that kind of a thing where um, other teachers and stuff can upload their own stuff up there and share it and you can make comments about who made it and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, at this point in my life, I don't think I have time to set up another website. Um, so I think if, if we're going to do the other website thing, I'll need someone to volunteer to uh, essentially set that up and help run it. Um, otherwise, I'll be more than happy to chuck stuff up on my website and share it through that way. Um, that's probably the easiest way for me. Uh, and then at this point, feel free to start chatting and jumping in and telling me to be quiet so I can listen to you. Um, I don't know how much support you guys will want with your flips learning stuff, so <clears throat> I'm happy to organise meetings like this online, uh, weekly, monthly, or you know, just right at the beginning of the term, right at the end of the term, whatever, whatever really uh, is your needs. So, uh, I mean, this is our first meeting, so I have no idea how many people are actually going to say, all right, I'm, I'd like to have another meeting in two weeks' time to sit there and go, you know, I, can, I don't know what to do with my kids or my kids aren't watching the, the stuff at home. How do I get them to watch it at home? Or what approaches can I use in class to kind of address that? Um, and so it's really just up to you. So anyone got any ideas of how much um, they actually would like to share stuff, uh, to have meeting, these kinds of meetings online? Uh, weekly is probably a bit of a stretch, Dan. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I, I do agree. I was. But I think mo monthly, monthly might be might be a good intro. Uh, whilst we get through sports med, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'd be happy with that just to share what everyone else is doing, and you know, obviously, everyone's classes are going to be are going to be completely different. I mean, I, I'm teaching in Parramatta, and and my kids probably may as well be from a different world from where you guys are, I'm not sure. but um, So I might have some, some tips for you guys and, and certainly you guys will have some tips for me. So I'd be a fan of monthly. I, I don't know about the rest of you. Yeah, anyone yeah I, think, I think monthly is good. I think weekly, we're all too busy for, for weekly. Yeah. Yeah, monthly. No worries. Mon I think monthly is probably going to be my preference as well. Anyone prefer to just come to this one and then another one at the end of the term or something? Or what? Um, what order are you going to do the um, teaching in? Because I guess um, sports med really goes for six weeks. So I guess towards the end of that six weeks, everyone will be starting a new. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm so sports med obviously will be the first thing I uh, pump out and then uh, health priorities will probably be the second thing that I get out because I've had people ask to have that this term anyway uh, and so I'm aiming to produce that as the term goes. Um, I mentioned that uh, a bit further back in this um, presentation so wherever that's gone, there it is. So um, Hopefully aiming to get that first critical question out by the end of uh, week one, hopefully before that, but um, definitely by the end of week one. And then from there, I'll then try and get the second critical question out, the third critical uh, so that they're all coming out ready. And then if you're going to 
if you've still got time at the end of um, term four to start a new topic, health priorities should already be done for you, um, which then gives me time to get uh, factors affecting and improving performance uh, done as well because they tend to go, you, know, you want that in order. You really, well, at least most people present it in terms of factors and then do improving performance straight afterwards. Does everyone else teach the this kind of order? I actually teach quite a different order to this. Um, I'm happy to start with sports med, but I don't usually teach health um, this early. I find it hard for the kids to remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just wondering, does everyone else kind of go with this with this order? In the past, we've followed this as well. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Um, the core one, we leave we leave core one till. Um, start of next year because yeah we find if they do it now by the time HSC comes around or revision at least they've they kind of remember that they did it. Yeah, yeah, and I, <laughs> honestly, I normally would do health priorities at the end as well, but I, it's only because I've had a whole bunch of emails from people saying, "Can we do health priorities first? Um, that I'm even bothering to um, to start to produce that stuff uh, for term four. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> things get going. I mean. I just if I've got time, I'm happy to start. I presume you want like factors affecting them. Yeah, I yeah. usually teach that. Yeah. Yeah, factors affecting is actually probably quite easy to do um, because you essentially you're only going to get through like that first critical question for factors affecting before the end of term four. Um, so I'm ha I'm happy to try and make sure that's ready, and you'll get a better idea, I guess, before the end of term uh, whether I'm going to have it all done. Um, but if uh, I'm sure there'll be other people. Uh, as we go to the book, we'll probably end up giving producing stuff a go. Um, and like, if you want to give a go uh, producing a video or something on energy systems and stuff, I'll be more than happy to stick it up on my website and everything. It's just you know, I, I have to be careful about how much I say I'm going to do because I also, I still, I still got to teach, I still got to mark, I still got to uh, stay on top of everything else as well. So, um, yeah, I can't really. I can't commit to making three lots of um, three modules worth by the end of the term. Um, I've already kind of indicated to people that I would do core one, um, so that'll be my main priority to get that out. Uh, and the, the factors affecting if I if I've got time, I'll definitely try and do it. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll have to in our monthly meeting. I'll, I'll let you know where I'm up to essentially, if you like. Yeah, I think that's um, that's good. Look, I don't expect you to do it all. I was just wondering what order you're kind of going to go in. Is that um, yeah, you know, so I'm happy to start with sports med and do that, but then I probably will teach for two next. So yeah. then I would probably yeah. and honest, do it. honestly, I I do plan on teaching for two next because uh, I actually only have six weeks of kids in my classroom this term, so I'm only going to get through sports med, uh, and then I don't have to start factors affecting until next. So turn one, uh, which is a lot more time to get on top of that. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely try and make sure I've got, I'll, I'll attempt to make sure that it's ready and I'll keep you updated as, as we go. Cool. All right. uh, anyone else on meetings, future meetings? No, beautiful. I'll send out an email to you before those meetings to get um, some feedback from you uh, so that I uh, make sure that I address any issues that are coming up for you in terms of what you actually want some help with. Um, and I'll then send out the agenda uh, before that meeting so that everyone has an idea of what we're going to chat about. Um, and then we can all kind of help each other uh, get through that. And then uh, the last bit that I was going to chat about briefly is essentially um, my presentations that I'm going to be doing for ACHPA. Uh, so if you are willing, you don't have to be willing, that's for sure. So you can feel free to use all these resources and stuff and not participate in any way in providing any kind of feedback for me. Um, but essentially it's just going to be kind of uh, one pre and one post um, survey, which would be like a Google Docs or um, oh, there's one other type that do it. I can't remember what they're called, but um, <clears throat> essentially providing that, um, getting, sending out a survey for uh, one that's for teachers and one that's for students, essentially just looking at whether or not um, it engaged the students, uh, does it promote independent learning uh, for those students, uh, what issues came up for you guys and how did we end up resolving them, um, how did you use your class time to 
um, once you get that extra, you know, it could be up to 30 minutes per lesson, depending on how long your lessons are really. Um, how did you then use it and stuff? And so um, when I then kind of present, I won't, there will be no names attached to anything that I present uh, because my presentation that I'm going to be giving is mostly about um, the story of teachers and how, in terms of implementing it um, and looking at it and going, you know, what are those key things that come up? What are the main problems and how do we fix them? Um, with learning and then whether or not it's worth doing in terms of student engagements um, and promoting their learning and stuff. Uh, so if you're happy to be part of that, then when I send out uh, links to uh, surveys and stuff, uh, if you could fill that in yourself and um, ask your students to fill it in the one that's for students. Again, 100% anonymous. I won't put on the surveys that you've got to put your name or anything in there. Um, so it's just really about getting some... Uh, some idea of how students are going with it, how you're going with it, um, and uh, yeah, helping me as I then help other teachers later uh, early next year. So, any questions about that before I? No, beautiful. The last bit that I've got is just question and answer. So, anyone got just general questions and stuff? I can see that our group chat section is fairly empty, so happy for people to just be vocal. All seems pretty straightforward to me, Daniel. I'm I'm pretty eager to start, so yeah. Um, I guess the questions may come at that first monthly meeting once we've we've sort of jumped into it head first with our students, and yeah, I'll probably have a bunch of questions then. Yeah. Okay. For now, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty simple, I think. So thank you. Um, firstly, it's uh, I'm really pumped to be part of it. So. Um, yeah, cool. Good on you. Thanks, Steve. I must have been fairly blown away by the response of people. So uh, I think in this meeting, there's not um, even half of the people that have said that they're keen to be involved in what's going on. So I've got 80 teachers on my email list that I'm sending emails out to. So <clears throat> I'm sure that um, between all of us, like if, if this works really well, it's going to be uh, something very unique, very different uh, in terms of uh, PDHP teaching and just where it's where it's headed and really I, I think um, but yeah thank you Tim that, uh, for your feedback uh, in terms of the next meeting should we go for roughly a month from now and look at um, you know somewhere around the end of week two or the beginning of week three next term Mate, I think that sounds good obviously um, it'll probably be a fairly big meeting because uh, as you said everyone's going to be sort of trying it for the first time and um, yeah, I'd say people have a lot of questions, so it could be a pretty big meeting, that one. Yeah, yeah. And I think key to making sure that works well is getting all those, as many questions in beforehand um, so that I can make sure things are formulated and everyone knows what questions we're going to hit when and um, then we can just kind of progress through them and help each other out. Yeah, it sounds great, mate. Thank you. Beautiful. Anything else? And mate, will you will you give us a, a message about all the details with the websites and all the different um, modes you're going to use? Yeah, so I'll um, as I produce so as soon as sports meds done, I'll make sure there's a, an email that comes out and says, you know, um, here's the link to go and find the booklet. Um, you'll find all the YouTube clips on the YouTube channel. So I've I've already sent out an email with a link uh, in it. If you click on the link, it'll take you to the sports med playlist for flip learning. Uh, that's on my YouTube channel, so you can scroll through it there. Uh, I'll also embed it into um, the website so that it's in the right spot with the content if you want to also make them read stuff. Um, and also, you know, my website's also got all the past paper um, exam questions on it from 2010 onwards, I think. Um, so I'll do that um, and I'll make sure the link's there for um, the booklets. If you want to download the booklets, I'll make sure that link's there for you in the email. So, yeah, I'll definitely... Um, when things are ready, I'll send out um, emails for things. I'll, in terms of, um, like, if, if you want to use Kahoot and quizzes and stuff, uh, I'll probably provide uh, more of the multiple choice questions and then essentially like, you, you can, there's already a whole bunch of ones on quizzes and Kahoot if you just type in, you know, um, how, it's, uh, how to classify sports injuries or something, you'll find there'll be a whole bunch of um, quizzes already on there. 
uh, and then I'm, I'll provide my own multiple choice ones. And if I choose to use Kahoot, I'll stick it on there and I'll label it as pdhpd.net flip learning or something. Um, but essentially it's more because I know people will use a very a wide range um, to do any kind of quizzes and stuff. So some of you will have Moodle, some of you will have um, some other kinds of um, systems that your school already utilises and your kids are already familiar with. And so hopefully I can just give you stuff where you can just um, type it in and it'll be um, done for you or copy and paste it or something. Anyone else got any questions for me? I guess um, my question is, I can already do a kind of flip learning, but the reason I put my hand up to be part of it is because I think the collaborative kind of approach we can all share, you know, different things that we're doing. Yep. I guess um, when you do the fully flipped approach, because I do bits and pieces, is that the question that probably everyone asks, how do you consistently get them to make sure they're doing the work in their own time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've used a range of different approaches uh, with my classes in terms of getting them to make sure that they've done the flip learning uh, at home. And one of the things um, about flip learning is that even if they approach your class and they haven't done it, uh, it's, you just give them earphones and the computer like, and they can go and they can sit in the corner and watch it um, straight away. And then they'll, they'll miss the next lot of activities or whatever. So if you're an activity that's fun and engaging you and they see that they're missing out on stuff because they haven't done it at home, um, and then they, they start to make it fun. I've also done, like I've made kids watch it during recess and lunch um, if they miss it um, and that kind of stuff. So... Um, yeah, there, there are a few things you can do. I mean, I'm, I'm using the mastery approach. So even if they don't watch it at home, they will be watching it in my class. Um, and the activities are in the booklet for them to get to work their own way through. Um, and so it's really, it's really about your approach, really. So the, with the basic one, if you're trying to keep the class together, um, then you're going to have more of an issue with the whole um, they didn't watch it at home before they came in. But essentially, once kids kind of uh, embrace the concept of it, and I will... Um, I'll set up a, a video shortly that I'll post up on the YouTube and share with everyone. It's very important that when you uh, have your first lesson with your class that you re and you're explaining the flipped learning approach to them, that you actually show them the benefits of it and so you allow them uh, to stop and rewind videos and stuff and give them the chances to uh, see the benefits of actually watching the video themselves and then talk to them about how much that's actually going to free up time in class you know, and Fred, you're going to have, you know, I know PDHP, you're going to have kids in there that are, just want to do crack. And you say, look, if you've done the videos at home, there's a lot more chance you're going to get a lot more crack um, because you've done, going to have done a lot of the content delivery uh, through those videos. Um, and it also means we're going to help you with your study. It means we're going to help you uh, to progress and deepen that understanding. We're going to show you how to apply it a bit better and you're going to learn those kinds of skills a lot, a lot more detail. So uh, that first lesson where you're selling it to the kids and getting the, that buy-in from them, uh, it's going to be very important. And so I'll, when I send out, when I've done that video, I'll send it out. I'll, um, I'll make sure that it's very clear that you, you want to make sure that you, you get the kids to buy into the whole concept of it. Um, you know, I've already been flagging it with my kids this year, um, saying, you know, next term, things are going to be very different. We're going for a flipped learning. We're going for mastery approach. So you've got to actually show me that you know something before you can move on. Uh, and you're not going to get uh, held back by other kids who, who want to muck around because you've got your content, you've got what's happening, you've got the uh, videos and stuff there to go over. And so you don't actually need the whole class to be focused at any point because you can be focused on your own learning. You can sit with a group of your own little friends and work on something together while these boys over here uh, are mucking around and not doing their work and I can go and just harass them and know that, you're, that they're on task, that they've got activities to do, that when they finish those activities, they're not going to stop and just sit around waiting for me to come back to them. The next activity is there for them. Uh, and so they're getting an idea of how to really be uh, responsible and develop that lifelong learning uh, approach. Um, so, yeah, get, getting that buy-in is going to be key uh, if you're going to do it, uh, particularly if you end up doing it for the whole year um, because if someone doesn't buy in, they're going to, uh, they're going to fall behind. Uh, and they'll, they'll notice that they're going to fall behind quite quickly. And the benefit of flip learning is that you can go, well, you know what, you can catch up real quick, go and watch a whole bunch of videos and answer a few questions at home and you'll be caught up in no time. So 
and actually then isn't creating more work for you either because you don't have to sit with the kid the whole time. You can just go go and go and watch the videos. They're there. Pause them. Rewind them. Make sure that you you know if you if you've got the concept, fast forward to where the next concept starts. You know, um, there's so much benefit in terms of uh, being able to address those issues that come up. So definitely buy in and then uh, working out what your consequences are going to be. So if a kid does show up and hasn't done anything, you going to be more, the more relaxed approach and just go, we'll go to the corner and watch the video and catch yourself up. And when you are caught up, come and join us. Or are you going to do, right, well, you're going to have to try and get this stuff done in class with an open textbook or something, and then I'm going to make you come back at recess to watch the video so that you learn the content again and then have a look. So it's really about um, how you're going to work with your kids and uh, making sure you get some buy-in. Uh, they will very quickly learn. I mean, it's HSC, so most kids, uh, it clicks at some point, uh, either at the end of last term or uh, as they uh, start this year, you know, their last year of school, and uh, they start to click in their head that this is actually really going to matter. So if they start to fall behind because they're not doing the work, they it then means that they can. Um, and one of, the, one of the great benefits of flip learning is that the kids who fall behind can easily catch up. If you've got kids that are out on sport frequently or anything, uh, they can go and watch those videos at home and you don't have to sit in, in a classroom with them during recess and lunch and reteach everything to them. Uh, any other questions? Um, yeah, Daniel, just sort of playing devil's advocate, mate, if you... Um if you've got a kid, say, you know, assessment assessment task is due or there's one coming up and you know, they, they sort of say, well, look, we haven't really covered that work yet. Um, obviously, you, you've, you've put the, the, the material there, the videos, the workbooks, the activities, et cetera, for them to do, but they've chosen not to do that. Um, so sort of where do you stand? You know, do you need to make sure you've sort of registered things, um, you know, precisely where you're at and, and what you've done? Um, you know, so they sort of can't come back and, and bite you. Yeah, yeah. So I'd probably um, have kids tick off stuff as they do it, um, and that'll flag for you quite quickly if they're if they're fully like. Particularly for me, I'm do, like I'm doing a mastery approach where the kids are essentially regulating their own stuff and working at their own pace. Um, I've got to make sure that there's some way where I can check that where they're up to all the time, uh, and so I should I think flag quite quickly in those first two weeks. It'll flag uh, if someone's not on the board and and getting over on top of those videos. Uh, if they then if they're not going to start to do those videos chuck them in a room at lunchtime and make them do it um, or uh, you know, involve parents. There's lots of ways to do that before you get to that assessment task. Um, and then when it, if it does come to the assessment, if they've got decent excuses for it, like if they've been sick for four weeks or whatever and uh, you, you normally would give them an extension anyway, um, if I'm doing a flip mastery approach and they haven't managed to master the content beforehand because they're struggling learning-wise, uh, then it might actually flag for you um, quite well that you need to modify your task to suit their learning capabilities anyway. Uh, and so it might change from a long written task, for example, to being an interview where you're checking their knowledge um, or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, as you, as you get more and more into the flipped learning stuff, um, the, the varied assessment approach also tends to come in. Uh, and so you give them a, uh, more choice, more option with that. Obviously, uh, with HSC, you still want deadlines because you still don't want to have to mark a thousand things right at the end. Um, but it's, monitoring your kids becomes a lot easier, I, I find, with the flipped learning approach because you are not standing there delivering and having them switch off. Instead, um, they've got that content. They can access it whenever they like. And you're checking that they're actually understanding that content in class. And so if you come to a kid and they've got no idea about it, we, you just go, well, have you watched the video? Go back to the video and watch it again. Um, where's the bit that you don't understand? You can watch that bit five times. Um, you know, and, I'll, and I'm going to teach my kids, for example, that they have to watch it. If they don't understand something, they're going to find the bit in the video, watch it three times before they can come and ask me. Uh, so they'll actually know that it's, they haven't understood something in the video and it's not just because they weren't paying attention to it. Uh, and so it's just, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. At all. Yeah, mate, I'll, I'll follow that. I, I guess I'm just sort of thinking, for, you know, if, if your line manager sort of says, um, you know, what did you teach at what date, you know, what did you actually deliver to the class on this day? Um, I mean, I guess it's important that um, when we're presenting this, we, we sort of register exactly what, what we're doing and what, what work we put up for the kids. So, yeah, okay. Um, so, 
Yeah, if you're doing the basic flip approach, then you should be able to say this is what we did that week uh, for sure because there'll be content that they were meant to do at home and then work that, that you did with them in class. If they didn't watch the content at home, it's essentially the same as them not doing any homework or them not engaging in the task in class. Like it's, the, the, the content is there. It's been provided and presented to them as essentially, but they haven't bothered to engage with it. And that happens regardless of how you're presenting content. If you're standing in class presenting content, the kid at the back who is not paying any attention to you, he's still going to sit there and say, oh, we didn't cover the content. But actually, yes, we did. You just weren't paying attention or oh, didn't do the work, right? Um, and essentially, it's the same thing. The video is there and et cetera. If you're doing the mastery approach, um, then really uh, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. So you, you might need to sit down with your line manager and say, you know, uh, talk, explain your approach to them uh, so they actually understand that, the student is progressing with their knowledge level. And so, you know, it's because if you start teaching uh, training types and methods and stuff and the kids don't understand um, the energy systems, once you get to um, the physiological adaptations, nothing's going to come together for them. Um, and so you, you just got to kind of explain to them how, you, how you're progressing it to make sure that their actual, you know, the knowledge about what it is comes before how it works and it comes before applying it, you know. Um, working your way through the li different levels of content knowledge and how that actually matches with the syllabus and stuff um, works quite well for a lot of subjects, from, particularly for, for our modules. Uh, so yeah, it's just um, yeah. So you, you might have to sell it to your to your line manager if it comes to that. But uh, generally, like with the flip mastery approach, most most teachers understand it. Like they might see that you know in our general systems, it's a bit harder because our system kind of dictates that you've got to do things on a certain date and, you know, getting through your content is number one. Um, but really there's no point flying through content for a kid who has no idea what it is. Um, you know, it's just they're getting little tiny bits of a whole bunch of stuff and it's not coming together. Whereas if they actually, they'll be slow to start with, but as they start to get it, then they, they speed up towards the end. Um, and it might flag for you that a kid needs to spend a bit more time uh, doing the basic activities and because if you've got kids, for example, who want to complete every single activity that you've listed there, uh, it might take them a long time to do it. Whereas really all they've got to do is get to the point where they can show you that they understand it and then they can move on. And so um, making sure your kids understand where they need to get to before they can do the next bit. Um, and if you've got kids that are struggling to get it before they get the next bit, they might, you, know, you might have to flag it and say, well, maybe, maybe you should have dropped this subject, mate. <laughs> Uh, if you can't if you can't understand any of it, um, then you know, it's too difficult for you. Um, but generally speaking, most, most of the time it's more of an effort thing uh, for most kids. It's really about you know, did you actually put in the effort? Uh, did you watch it? Did you try and understand it? Have you engaged in the conversations, the the tasks? Have you asked me questions about it? Um, so that yeah, when your line manager comes, you, you should you should be able to have some kind of evidence of you know the kids ticked off. He's done this, 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 and this. He's up to here, and from there, I can see what comes next, and he's going to get through that at a relatively decent pace. If you know he's already like four weeks behind, and it's week it's three, like you, you want to ask, it means that you've got to start to think about putting things in place to really help assist that student to achieve. Um, and you might, and then might mean that you actually approach your line manager before he does to you, in terms of you know I've got a kid that's really struggling. How am I going to get in there? Um, and find some assistance in terms of getting him to cover that content. You know, that sounds great, mate. I'm in a, um, I think I'm in a really good position to start this because um, I've only got six kids uh, in my class and, and there's, a, there's sort of a wide range as well. So I think I really want to look at that mastery approach. Yeah, great. Um, and having only six students, it's, it's going to be a lot easier to sort of keep track of, of where everybody is. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited by it. Mike, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, if there's no further questions, thank you guys so much for being willing to get involved with this. Uh, I look forward very much uh, to uh, our next term and hopefully into next year as we work together at getting this uh, up and running and uh, working as, as good as we can and hopefully uh, it'll just continue to get refined really and uh, the resources will always be there and so next year hopefully when you've got the people who are teaching year 11 next year coming through you just say to them, oh look, go and 
use these resources that are there already um, and they can then flick through it and have a look. And uh, yeah, I, I reckon this is, I'm, I'm very excited about what, what we're doing. So thank you guys so much and thank you for your time and your holidays. Go and have a break. It's Friday. You go enjoy your afternoon, enjoy your weekends. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Ace, mate. I don't know if my mic's on. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you? Yep. yep. Oh, hi, Daniel. It's Gabby Delamont. How are you? I'm good, Gabby. Can How you are you? Can you see me? <laughs> uh, no, I can't see you. <laughs> okay, I can see you. It's just like this little picture in the bottom of my phone. I only yeah, just oh, got the Yeah, you've got to give. Yeah, yeah. You've got to give Zoom access to your um, video camera, so that you. So oh, okay, see. okay. I'll fix that for next time. Are we having more meetings? I've just. I got home at two thirty-five, so I only saw or heard question and answers. Really. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um, so I've recorded this one, and I'll, I'll share that with you. Yep. And then, um, yeah, we're going to have another meeting probably around the end of uh, week two, beginning of week three. Um, yeah. So you guys will have started to deliver some stuff and have, you know, a thousand questions for me and I'll have to set aside probably four hours for that <laughs> to get through everything. But, um, yeah, hopefully it all uh, will work well. I'll get you emails between now and the beginning of term with all the resources that are getting done. Uh, you can see up on uh, YouTube, I shared an email with that already has, I think I've uploaded three now. They tend to take an hour and a half or two hours to upload at this point. And it's not because, oh, okay. yep. not because they're overly long. I think the longest one I've put up is about 13 minutes. So mm -hmm. um, it's more just because they're, I don't know, I presume they're high quality or something. Who knows? High quality, that's it. We're just really much slow internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. All right, I'll have a look at those. But I don't even know what module are you planning on teaching first? So um, I'm starting with sportsmen and I'm hoping to okay. uh, produce stuff for call one as we go. And then yep. um, some people were saying uh, in, during this meeting that they would particularly like uh, some factors affecting performance stuff ready for the end of the term. So they're happy to do sports better to start, but then they want to do factors next. Uh, so okay. I'm going to attempt to do that, but I'm not making any promises because it'll kind of depend on how my term flows and how it's working. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. that's essentially how, how we're up to. And, yeah, I'll, sh I'll share this recording with you as well so you'll be able to watch the recording back in terms of what was no perfect all right yep yep i'll watch that first that'll be my first step i think but um it's exciting i'm looking forward to it yeah me too thank you so much for all your work you're doing well no worries Gary. no worries so have you taught this before this approach yeah yeah i've, do, I've done the basic flip learning approach um but mm -hmm. i'm i'm stepping into the mastery approach after doing uh some pd and uh some reading about it i've been quite sold on it, particularly for my school context. I think my for my school context, uh, that flip mastery is going to uh, work wonders. I think once it's all set up and running, it's going to be a headache to set up, but it's, yeah. it's gonna be good once it's done. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm intended to do that, but people, uh, you know, I'm essentially just providing resources and people can use them however they like. Um, right. Whether they want to do basic flip learning, if they just want to do a couple of lessons that are flipped, or it doesn't really. It's not going to yep, yep. Um, upset me in any way. I'm just <laughs> hoping, yeah. excited that there's so many people that are getting in here and wanting to share and get involved. It's good. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well, I'll watch that um, video. I don't want to keep you now. You've obviously been on here for a while. Yeah. Um, so I'll watch that video, and then if it's all right, if I can email any questions through to you that I might have. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Excellent. All right, well, I'll let you go, but thank you so much for your time, and I'll work out my phone how to get... So I've got voice, but no, no camera. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So you just have to give um, your give Zoom the app access to your camera. You you have to do it through settings. Okay. Yeah. No worries, because I did download Zoom. That was okay. That was easy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's not set up properly. So I'll, <laughs> I'll correct that for next meeting. No worries. All right. Thanks, heaps, Dan. Have a great great holiday. You too, Gabby. See you later. Okay. Thank you. Bye.